All right, I want to talk a little bit about normal force here. Rem let me remind you, normal force is the force that goes perpendicular to the surface, right? Perpendicular to the surface. It's the force that a table or whatever the surface is, basically it's the force it applies in resisting breaking. So instead of this box breaking through the table because gravity weight is pulling it down, right? Normal force resists that, pushes back up to where we reach an equilibrium. Equilibrium means the forces are balanced out, the acceleration is zero. More to come on this word equilibrium in the future. Remember though, it is perpendicular to the surface. So if it's slanted like this, normal force actually goes off perpendicular to the surface, not straight up. Now, uh, normal force, oddly enough, is what you interpret as weight. Now, weight in reality is just your mass times gravity, but that's not necessarily your apparent weight. Your apparent weight, what you feel, is how much normal force is being applied to you. Let me, let me try to explain this a way that you'll understand. All of you teenagers, you strap yourselves in, or you have at some point in time strapped yourself in to something that looks like this. And then you get hauled all the way up to the top of some big tall tower. Why? Because you feel like falling today. I don't understand it. All of us old people, we don't understand it because quite frankly, we fall enough on our own. There's stairs, there's the random kitchen. We don't want to fall. It doesn't make us happy, but you teenagers, you're crazy. You like to fall, right? And whenever you, whenever you strap yourself into this free fall machine and you fall, right, you get a sense of, quote, weightlessness. If I'm to draw a free body diagram of you while you're falling, right, you're going to just have neglecting air friction. Let's put that in red. You're just going to have one force, the force of gravity. No normal force. Now, the force of gravity is your weight. That's mass times gravity. Remember, F, Fg or weight is mass times gravity, Mg. So there is, you do have a weight, but it doesn't feel like you have one because you're accelerating downwards, right? But, um, so you, you don't feel like you have a weight because there's no normal force. Check out what's missing. The normal force is what you feel. It is your apparent weight. It's how hard, you know, if, if you're standing level, if you're not accelerating, remember the ground has to push back up equal to the force of gravity, Fn. Right? But if you're in free fall to where you're actually accelerating at 9.81 meters per second squared, then you don't have this, and so your apparent weight is zero. All right, let's work a problem now where the apparent weight is actually going to be less than the, than the actual weight here, aka the normal force is going to be smaller than the actual weight. This will also be our first problem with multiple forces. And this is where, and I was telling you about this, the free body diagram is so crucial. So let me get an xy axis going on and a free body diagram. I'm going to choose positive, negative, positive, negative here. So the force is acting on this box right here, a 1.2 kilogram box. I have a pulley with a rope going over it and the rope, someone's pulling on it with about 10 newtons here. And my question is going to be, what is the apparent weight of the box? Apparent weight, though, remember, is the normal force. So, late, so writing down all my forces here. I, I know I have the force of gravity because we're here on Earth, right? I also have a tension in a rope, T equals 10 newtons. Right? Let me make sure it's 10 dot because it's exact. And notice it's resting on a surface. Whenever something is resting on a surface, there is also normal force. Okay, And that, that should be Fn there. Now I can go ahead and tell you I, I didn't draw this correctly because the object isn't accelerating upwards or accelerating downwards. So the acceleration, because it's not doing that, is zero. Right, the net acceleration is going to be zero. This is equilibrium when the acceleration of the system is zero. We are in, e in equilibrium. So because of that, this vector down here, and let me come back in and this vector down here, the force of gravity, should be the same magnitude as these two vectors up there. This is where my sum of the forces is going to come in. So watch this. Everything's happening in the y-axis, right? I don't have a single vector in my x-axis. Nothing this way. So all I'm going to have to deal with is the y-axis. So let me go ahead and write my equation. Sum of the forces equals ma. Now, I'm going to take all the forces Right, there are currently three of them on my free body diagram. Why the free body diagram is so important? 
going to take all of my forces and I'm going to put them into the sum of. In other words, I'm going to add them all up, okay, according to their direction. The ones going up, I chose to be positives. The ones going down, I chose to be negative. So here we go. I've got normal force plus, because positive, uh, the tension minus, because gravity's negative, minus Fg, remember gravity negative, I chose down to be negative, equals Ma. So the sum of the forces, right, I'm adding them all up, turns into this. And the way I know what to write is I just look at my free body diagram. I take everything that went up and I called positive, so a positive Fn and a positive tension. And then minus, because I chose down to be negative, minus the force of gravity equals mass times acceleration. So now let me just substitute in numbers and try to work out this math. Normal force is the apparent weight. That's what I'm looking for. Fn plus, now tension, tension I am told off of the picture is 10 newtons. So plus 10 minus the force of gravity is weight. Remember, remember the equation for force of gravity from the first video. It's mg, mass times the acceleration of gravity equals ma. So let me just work another line here. Normal force plus 10 minus, now the mass I am told is 1.2 kilograms, so minus 1.2. The acceleration of gravity here on Earth I know it's 9.81 equals, uh, and now I can actually, let's go ahead and replace my m with the actual mass, although you're going to see something here in a second. 1.2, now the acceleration. We are in equilibrium meaning the acceleration is zero. So this entire term over here on the right is going to become, this entire thing is going to become zero over there. So Fn plus 10 minus what comes out to be about 11.7 when I multiply those two numbers together, 11.77 equals zero. So Fn minus 1.77 approximately equals zero, meaning my normal force has to be equal to, and now I've got to be careful with sig figs, I only have two here, about 1.8 newtons. So the apparent weight of this object is 1.8 newtons. If, if I was actually looking at the reality weight, forgetting the normal force, forgetting you know, what it feels like, it just would have been, remember, force of gravity is the weight, force of gravity is mg, which by the way, we did that calculation right here. So the normal weight would have been about 11, you know, let's see, 11.7, so 12, Newtons is what the actual weight would be, but because I'm pulling up on it, right, what it actually would feel like if you, if you slid a scale in underneath this object because there's something lifting up on it, the apparent weight, what the scale would read, would be 1.8 newtons. One last problem here. So I have a person riding an elevator, and the elevator accelerates upwards at 1.2 meters per second, and that should say squared there. So the, it goes upwards at 1.2 meters per second squared. Maybe the, the, he got in on the ground floor, and now it takes off going upwards. So let's do a free body diagram. Um, I have normal force on the person. So yes, the elevator is accelerating upwards and there's a cable right attached to the elevator pulling it up, but I'm not doing, I'm not caring about in this problem the elevator, I'm caring about the person itself, himself, right? So the person has the floor of the elevator pushing up on him, uh, normal force. Then I have weight, gravity, going down. Fg with an acceleration, the net acceleration is 1.2 meters per second upwards. So I've got this man standing on a scale here in the elevator, and my question is, what is the apparent weight that, that he feels? How heavy does he feel, right? How many newtons um, does it feel like he weighs? All right, so this is all on the y-axis. Sum of my forces equals mass times acceleration. So let's look at my forces here. I have normal force pushing the guy up, right? And it's actually larger than the force of gravity because we're accelerating upwards. Once again, we're not worrying about the elevator. That's why you don't see a tension with the wire. It's the floor of the elevator pushing the guy up. So I called that way positive 
and down negative. So I've got normal force Fn minus Fg equals Ma. Okay, so just substituting in for some of the forces what the two forces are. A positive normal force, which I get off my free body diagram. A negative force of gravity, which I get off my free body diagram. The free body diagram is the key. It tells you what to put in for some of the forces. Okay, so let's continue to substitute in. Normal force minus mass times gravity equals ma. Right? And normal force is what we're looking for. It's what a person feels as the apparent weight. So Fn, now let's substitute in some numbers, minus the person weighs 65 kilograms times 9.81, the acceleration of gravity, equals 65 times the acceleration. Now the acceleration is going up, right? So I call it a positive 1.2. If it was going down, it would have been negative 1.2. So this means normal force 65 times 1.2 plus 65 times 9.81. Right? Um, basically, I'm just taking this and adding it to the other side, right? See, see the negative? And so instead of combining there, I just went ahead and moved it. And so then we plug that into our calculator and come up with 715 newtons, or with sig figs, 720 newtons. The person would normally weigh about 640 newtons just standing flat, but because the elevator is accelerating upwards, right, it, it gives him the feeling that he has a, a greater weight, and a greater apparent weight, normal force goes up. Likewise, think about whenever the elevator goes down, right, for a second it feels like you're kind of floating, it feels like your weight is less whenever the elevator actually goes downwards. So apparent weight can be different and it is tied to the normal force.